Okay, hi. My name is Alexander Legand from the company Nanostripe in Germany. I'm uh, then the sales manager for Yumea. It means mainly then for Europe, Middle East and Africa, but uh, just, yeah, without uh, Central Europe. And so what we are doing is then, we are just producing the world's most precise 3D printer, just based on two photon polarization. And the point is that it's always a little bit, bit difficult just to explain in words and so much easier if you see some pictures. That's the reason why I just, I hope you can are able to see then the laptop that you just yeah, get a bit a better idea then of what we are doing. So um, here, so we are a spin-off from uh, Karlsruhe Institute of Technology and company Nanoscribe. And so now since more than 14 years in the field and so we have in the meanwhile then yeah, let's try it. Okay. Does it work? Okay, sorry, I need to like this. Okay. It's got a problem with the gimbal right now. Okay. Yeah, please. Better? Okay. Yeah. So come the nanoscribe. And uh, so we have installed now, in the meanwhile, then more than 250 systems worldwide. And so half of it, for example, in Europe. A lot of our customers are university-based. We have more and more industry customers, but uh, typically they don't want to be named. And so after a while, we decided then that it's necessary then, especially and also for the named industry customers, but also for certain applications that have most precise 3D printer and a new model platform and we have more and more interest from industry on one side and we have, we have a wide range of different applications so we decided to create then for each different application area a certain model and uh, so that's what you see over here so to one typical application goes to a micro lens arrays and uh, then do for example print the so-called gold master to replication we have different projects with di different industrial customers then to uh, do replication not sure if it's possible to see so as an example so we provided sorry yeah so this yeah. is a typical ex uh, example then with one of our project partners so we provided the golden uh, master polymer and they used for example hot embossing then um, just to replicate that. So this is a replicated sample of micro lens arrays, then diffusers and uh, defective optical elements. So this is through a 3D printer? So this is replicated and it was originally produced then of uh, the first. All right. So we're we talking about it? small details? Exactly, absolutely. And so let's go back. I hope you still can see the laptop. And you see here in scale bar, so we speak of something like uh, here in the microns, and then with uh, square millimeters up to square centimeters, what you have seen before. And in total, it can go down to something like 100 to 200 nanometer lateral feature size. But of course, you can also as well then print larger structures. So what you see over here, if you decrease resolution, you can increase the printing speed and expose then larger volumes at a certain area. Again, examples for that. So, um, for example, for this, so object here for us is a quite big one. And so you can then, this here is printed and with around then, um, so in something like uh, 13 to 14 hours print time. As a what would it be for, this kind of thing? So before it was uh, then, if you have a higher resolution on that, then it's impossible to uh, print that at all. So it's the advantage of printing something very, very small is you can do all kinds of stuff for that? So the advantage then, of course, uh, is then if you can print something uh, with this high precision that you have to, depends, of course, on the applications. So, for example, then uh, if you work with um, photo in photonics, you would like to have something then corresponding then or in the area then in the uh, wavelengths, for example. Or for the micro lens arrays, then of course you have to um, then need certain parameters. So, for example, you would like to have a smooth, uh, so surface smoothness down in the uh, tens, uh, 10 nanometer and below area, for example. So, more example then 
So as well then, give an example then that it's possible then to do for different uh, applications other models. So this is an example then for applications for the Quantum X Bio model as a 3D bioprinting system. So a light-based one. So you can print uh, with embedded cells from the beginning and have achieved then cell viability rates then of higher than 90% of, so after, for example, in four hours. And so what you see over here is then in green is are the living cells and in red are the, um, so the red points over here are the dead cells. So this is a scan through then in set direction then through different layers of uh, the embedded cells. And in red here, so this um, just um, mesh over here, so this is the scaffold that was printed to support then the cells. Or of course, what you also can do, always can do is then to print uh, first a 3D scaffold and then later on place cells on them for tissue engineering, for example. What you see over here. Or for example, and also some of our customers use the system then uh, to provide vascular models, because the point is then always um, the longer the, the lifetime then uh, should be, then after a while what you have to do is then you have to provide then um, just cells with uh, nutrients for example. And like this you need somehow or you're interested in, in uh, very often then to print then vascular models to support your cells then with nutrients. Or other application areas then you can print as well then a master for microfluidics and then uh, use that for replication and like this create channels and later on then to print fine elements into these channels like uh, mixers or uh, then uh, just um, filtering elements or what you see over here is then to provide then here uh, cell cages or cages for cells or then uh, for example pillar elements then to later on uh, enable anchoring points for the cells or other uh, application then, so you can go into photonic integration circuits. And so therefore it's interesting then to print new elements, photonic elements, micro lenses then, for example, in this case here, on top of optical fibers. So what you can do is then, so you can print either then elements then for outcoupling and optical, of optical fibers, or on the other side then you can print then elements then on photonic chips to uh, connect in here to send signals, data rates then from one side to the others. And for example then for special wavelengths we achieve then data rates of better than one decibel then for example. Or a typical example is then what you would like to hear is then you would like to of course then to print automatic. That uh, means then, so in the left side we see here the original uh, design and on the right side so you see then here might be difficult to see then here the illuminated core of such a fiber and what we do is then that we print and uh, that we choose then in the software the starting and the end point and the software automatically then looks for um, the core of the fiber to print automatically the lenses that you see here on the left side and this is how the result looks like so um, parallel um, printed lenses then uh, parallel to each other to provide them um, uh, just parallel outputs and you see that you obviously had a good result in printing by um, seeing then that you achieved parallel beams with it. Or the other way then for photon integration is then to print then coupler on top of uh, photonic chips for example then on creating couplers then lenses out coupling lenses in coupling lenses or what you see over here is then so to find automatically then uh, the markers that are showed here to print in this case here edge couplers directly here at the edge of this waveguide and this is again then how it looks like so this is the um, original design and this is the printed result shown under an SEM picture for the details and so this brings me at the end to the motor think big and uh, yeah so uh, think big and print nano thank you very much so what kind of uh, big thoughts are people having and coming to talk with you and say hey i'd like to do this can you help me do that uh, there's many different ideas so what we do is then so we sell equipment and um, so, but very often, so if people tell me what they would like to do is then that I forward them to customers of our uh, equipment to uh, enable them to print their ideas. Theoretically, you can print anything that you have an STL file, a 3D CAD file of. And just to give you one example then, 
Um, just so we are part of another company, company Bioco Bioconvergence, and their idea is then at the end that you are able to print um, just organs for uh, humans, then for transplantation, because a lot of people then worldwide have very long. Um, just waiting lists and have to wait very long times until they are able to get the operation done. Or just uh, for a uh, step in between to provide then, um, again, human on a chip uh, systems then, for example, to improve drug testing on one side, to um, just um, decrease then uh, the um, turnaround time for track testing on one side and on your side and also if you are able then to do um, just body on a chip or human on chip testing then you can also avoid then the use of um, animals then for track testing or for for example testing then of um, other med yeah, um, then of course then for um, nah, for cosmetics sorry yeah uh, what are the materials you can use in the printer? So the principle behind is then it's two-fold improvisation. So the first step, you uh, would work with polymers. And then of course, if you are interested in other materials, you have different possibilities, like to use this polymer then as a template, and then later on uh, use other techniques, like coding techniques then to have access to ceramics, or for example, then also then um, just center your product then to get class, for example, then as another step, or for example, then use electroplating to have access to metal, like um, just gold, copper, or nickel. Uh, and in, in medicine, in nanomedicine, what do people want to do with a printer that goes that small, for so, example? So for example, what you would like to do is then either to print, uh, to use it for your uh, human and chip model, to print uh, fine elements in it, like mixers or filters, or for example then, um, you, you also can do is then there are some other work done where people just print uh, movable parts, like small microbots that deliver trucks inside the human body to a place where they should go to for better truck um, just efficiency. Uh, would you actually print things that go into the human body? Yes, that's one game of different researchers than worldwide. And your machines are ready for that? Uh, for the printing, yes. So um, for the printing and uh, testing, yes. And it was also used then for animal uh, models, but also there were some, <coughs> there was some wor first work done as well then, at least for human testing. And. Uh, do you see anything about the price of the printer, of the machine? You have the Quantum X Align, XBO, X, X Shape, those products? So these are products that can be bought, and so just to give you a price range, so, and in total, so we speak of prices then um, just going up, depending on the more difficult, uh, sorry, the more different um, just uh, positions you can add, but of course it can go up to something like 800k euro and the core model starts at around uh, 450 to 500k euro and we have as well then an, um, just our workhorse for academics the photonic profession gt2 system and this just um, has a price range between 350k euro up to 450k euro and i guess you have some really cool and interesting customers that are doing very secret projects absolutely very advanced R&D and you are involved with them, I guess. So of course, so a lot of our customers is in uh, our university research centers and so if you look just for the world universities uh, ranking, then you see out of the top 10, nine of them are our customers already and uh, then for tubic applications, then for example for industry, it would be then micro lenses. If, just, if you have a look then for your uh, mobile, then you see that there's a lot of research done always to improve, for example, the cameras inside the mobiles. And uh, can you say a little bit more about Bico? So the company Bico is then uh, just stands for Bico Convergence. It was founded then in around uh, 2016 then, um, just as a company selling, and uh, they went into the um, just US stock market to just uh, gain money or just uh, yeah, to get money then to buy different smaller companies like for example the um, just a uh, company Nanoscribe 
And the big vision then is uh, just to avoid on one side then animal testing and on the next step is then for the future is then to do organ printing for humans. And enable new advanced technology Absolutely. So, and of course, then for, for different applications like, uh, so um, we mentioned life sciences, we mentioned medicines, then on one side, and then of course, then always, um, so the imagination is then the limit. So everything what you can have uh, to, in mind and as an idea to print, what you can uh, do a 3D sketch, you can uh, just try to print that. And so the other applications then are typically then photonics, and or I mentioned microbotics, then also people, just in general, people do, for example, as well, MEMS. And uh, are you world leader in exactly this stuff? You said this is most so, precise. So on one side, we are then a world leader in terms of um, just machines. Then on one side, and of course, then technology leader as well, then in terms of then the most precise 3D printing um, then possible uh, technology, then based in this case, based on two photoprocessation. The feature size is going to 100 nanometer and fairly below that. Cool. Uh, anything we forgot to talk about? Not from my side. And of course, then if you have questions, then I think it makes more sense than to um, place them directly here at the booth and to speak with me directly to go for details.